to make sure that you got the opportunity to join us. It's going to be nearly two hours fully packed with the most uh, useful tools in how to achieve your results and tools that uh, the best, you know, so the most successful people in the world are using. And I'm very excited about sharing this with you. It's been a journey for me from going through struggle and achieving results as well. So I want to share my journey, the struggle, and also how I see different tools shift uh, the results that I'm looking for and how I can help you make 2017 the best year for you. So make sure to jump on if you have the time. And if not, I can send you the um, link as well. And I'm looking forward to seeing you there. Okay, bye. Hi guys, I wanted to make sure that everyone got the opportunity to see um, and have the opportunity to be here uh, on this webinar. And I'm really, I see people are jumping on and I'm really excited about sharing my journey with you and also getting into the vulnerable spot because we all have results we want to have achieved that we haven't yet achieved. And why is that? So also getting into why is it that the things you are looking for has not arrived yet. So I want to help you guys with that as well. And please feel free to, uh, to ask me any questions if you want to during the um, webinar. And, uh, you know, no question is too stupid or uh, not uh, good enough. So please, Use, you know, if it, if I'm using words that you don't, so what is she meaning by that, etc. Please do feel free to um, ask me. And I'm very excited about sharing. There's been so much revelations for me as well with working with the best of the best, like Tony Robbins with Regan Hillier, who has also written the foreword of my book that is launching soon. And and so I'm really looking forward to sharing um, this journey with you and uh, to share what is um, what tools you need to um, to start uh, achieving the results that you are looking for. So let's dive right into it. Right, I am glad that you joined. Thank you for joining uh, today, and I am here to serve you i'm here to give you the best possible tools tools that i know has created massive shifts in others lives so what i wanted to share who my my name is Tony elizabeth arrow i have previously worked in corporations such as microsoft and google at Google, I was the industry manager and I was responsible for the biggest clients. And what I saw really in those uh, positions was that a lot of companies and a lot of people within the companies, they are struggling. They are struggling to adapt and excel, they are struggling to adapt to all the changes that is going on now. They are struggling to excel the results. And hence, that is why I wrote a personal book on how to adapt and excel for everyone to use, and not just uh, uh, leaders within the big organizations, but really for everyone. And I'm really excited about, it all started for me when I, so I, in 2008, I was working at Microsoft and I was really living what I you know, thought was the dream life. I had a wonderful boyfriend. We had a wonderful house. I had my dream job, and car, etc., everything. And then the journey of struggle began when we decided to move to Paris and I had to really adapt to a huge culture change and what was really a massive cultural uh, cultural change for me i thought it wasn't gonna be that big 
but it was massive it was really really big and i found myself every day coming back home and really being um i would say depressed maybe a strong word i was really down and i saw that okay so this is not for me and the things i'm going through it's really painful i don't want to be where i am at um and hence began the start of a journey to find out what was my purpose what was uh what was it that i wanted to deliver what was the value that i wanted to bring and uh, I saw that I needed to change uh, my job because I worked 12 hours a day. I didn't have any time to look for other jobs and I really didn't like the job that I had. Um, so I needed to change it. I took a, I took a temp position in a, I won't name the company. It doesn't really matter anyway. It was really, really bad. And I had like a thousand euros a month to live on. And I remember us standing outside in the cold and waiting to get our salary by check, right, like back to the 1930s when I'm sure when you waited outside to you know get your paycheck. And for me, it was such a like low um, because here I came from Microsoft and really having a great job there, and then I was suddenly doing laundry in microsoft databases in a temp job in you know the suburb of paris and yeah it wasn't it wasn't fun <laughs> so i started to see okay so how can i shift my focus how can i change the surroundings how can i change where i am at today and i really needed to dig deep and see okay so i need to think about where I want to go. I need to focus and visualize on where I want to go instead of, you know, where I'm at now. And I'm going to fast forward because the last year after going entrepreneurial, uh, having come from Google and Google being, you know, the best place to work and actually resigning from my job, one of the few that resigns from Google, right? Resigning from my job to start the quest of helping clients to create better workplaces it's been really a journey in self-discovery and also a journey in struggling uh, to create the results i wanted so i've been running left and right and doing everything that everyone told me you know through a good uh, advice to do and uh, nothing really happened and also I was pregnant and we had our second daughter last year and it was all um all work I felt and a lot of beauty in getting her but a lot of work and no results and I was wondering why aren't the results showing up that I want to and what I saw was and what I understood after having some mentors that you know are world class in this area is that it is about being aligned. And I'm gonna talk about uh, that a lot. So I'm gonna tell you what aligned is. So aligned is finding out what you are passionate about and what you are, what your beliefs are in regards to an area and it might be that you find out that hmm, some of what i some of the things that i thought wasn't necessarily true or maybe i can try this that would be better that's fine because it's a discovery as well but what i really understood was there is no secret to success you you know it, there is no magic formula in Google, we talked about magic formula and yes, it's great. You need the insight, you need the challenge and you need the right insight for the challenge and then the solution. And then that will uh, create the magic. But other than that, there really is no success formula for um, getting the results that you want. However, you need to be aligned. So you won't create the results that you're looking for if you are 
doing stuff that you don't really believe in or if you're doing stuff that really f doesn't you know it's not it doesn't feel good so i will get into more about that in fast tracking your results on tools that uh, really successful people are using at the end of the webinar and i will also i promise to give you a great offer on how i can help you and how i can serve you so i promise that, that will also come uh, at the very end and first, I wanted to start with, if you are to think about 2017, what are three commitments that you are going to hold to yourself? So three commitments about how you will show up. So before we even go into the results, what would be three commitments that you will commit yourself to? And what will you not tolerate in moving forward? Uh, what is the things that you're currently doing that you're thinking, okay, so I shouldn't really be tolerating this from myself. If you are, for instance, I've found that I've, I'm self-sabotaging sometimes in the way that I'm, I'm too... I'm letting others take my place. And that's also some of the learnings that I've gone through uh, the past year. So getting back to the learnings is that I really need to step up and believe in the value that I can deliver. Um, and that goes for you as well. You need to step up and, and believe in the value that you can deliver and really see the value and, and you know, take your space and stand for what you, what you believe in. So, think about i'm going to let you have some times to jot it down because it's really important to you get the creative process starting started when you go and journal when you think about okay so what are the three commitments what do i commit myself to how am i going to show up what is my intention for this year so what is your intention for 2017 when you are, are at the end of 2017, what would have been your intention and in achievement in this year? And we're going to talk about it's not just business, but it's all areas. But because why would you seek to be really successful in any area if you are really struggling in the others, if that is affecting how you struggle in the other areas. And then we're going to talk about, uh, we're going to go into the outcomes in specific areas, but I want to hold that on. Um, so what are the three commitments that you commit yourself to do? What is your intention with 2017? And what will you not tolerate with what you're currently doing? And then what you should be doing instead. And I'm going to let you have a couple, well, maybe a minute for that. And then we will move on to what are, what is it that you want to have achieved in all areas of your life. And also looking at where you are now. So where are you now compared to where you want to be? First, first things first, look at the three commitments. I commit myself to what is my intention for 2017 and what do I no longer tolerate? I no longer tolerate to be fearful. I no longer tolerate to be fearful and not do things. I no longer tolerate to not be present every day in the area that I'm delivering. I no longer tolerate that I'm not stepping up or that I'm not asking for the sale. I'm no longer, I no longer tolerate to let my limiting beliefs um, make me not show up. My commitments for this year is to show up anyway and show up every day. It is to deliver the utmost value to clients in the way that I know I can and also take my space in that area. And I no longer tolerate to have others' limiting beliefs be my limiting beliefs, or I longer, no longer tolerate to have others uh, give me advice and then following them without 
seeing if they are aligned with what I know, my experience, etc. So, okay. Have you jotted some of them now? Please feel free to um, ask questions as well. We're going to go to big picture. So if you think about the big picture, your physical grace and power, your health, uh, how your family life is and how you want it to be, your professional life, your emotions and how you feel, how you help others or how you can help others and serve others who are in need of that, uh, your friendships and your peers, and in the area of personal growth. If you are to think about this as a wheel, what will that wheel look like? If it is a scale from zero to 10, and you draw a line from each area. So for instance, in physical health, you think that you are seven out of 10. In finances, you feel that you are eight out of 10. In your family life, you think that maybe I'm a four out of 10. So 10 is the you know, ideal. In how I feel emotional, spiritual, maybe five out of 10. So what do you think of each area in your life? How does that look like today? And what would you like to have accomplished this year in each area? And I'm not just talking about writing one or two sentences. And this is this might take, you know, this might take a day for you to write in all areas. And this might take shorter. This might take 10 minutes. So I'm not going to um, give you all that space to write down now for the sake of moving on and giving you as much value as possible. I'm thinking, what do you want to have achieved in each area? So for instance, for me, I can give you some examples. And it needs to be measurable. When you are creating goals for 2017 or for any year, it needs to be measurable. You need to be able to measure it. So if you're going to lose weight or if you're going to achieve something in business, make it measurable. Um, so for instance, it would be losing weight, it would be 10 kilos or 10 kilos in six months or acquiring five clients that pay 20,000 in the next three months. So that is a measurable goal. Make it measurable and also uh, have a time and stamp on it so that you can say that, okay, where am I now compared to where I thought I would be? And in the area of physical uh, power and grace, um, one of my goals for 2017 is to run a marathon. It can be something else for you. It can be that you want to lift a certain amount of weights by a certain amount of months, or it can be that you want to be full of energy and feeling really strong and vital, and that you're just jumping out of bed in the morning and you can't wait to start a new day. Or it can be that you are really uh, overflowing with energy, even if you're playing with your kids uh, half of the day so it can be many things we might make it measurable when it comes to family life what is it that you want to have accomplished within this year that is different from last year or that is more of what you have uh, done last year or that is more than what you have ever achieved you want to have a joyful passionate relationship would you like to find a partner? Uh, do you want to have even more playful you know, joy and time with your children? What is it that you want to achieve in your family life? Do you want to, for instance, give back to your parents and spend more time with the big family? What is it? 
And then it's the professional life. What do you want to have accomplished within 2017? Is it that you want to have a promotion? Is it that you want to change your job? Is it that you want to acquire more clients? Uh, what is it? Do you want to grow your company? Make it measurable and make it specific. And look at where you are now compared to where you want to be. And then I have an area called emotional juice and spirit and it's about how i show up every day and be the best version of me and so how can you make sure that you are the best version of you or that you show up every day as someone who you can really be proud of someone who really achieves the best results Forever friendships and peers is another um, area. That is, how can I make sure to take care of good care of my friends and take good care of my peers? How can I make sure, what am I going to do this year? What am I going to achieve in this area that will make 2017 the best year ever? And then I have an area called Gracious Helper. We're going to give away 1% of the profits to poor children and children who hasn't had the best of upbringings. And that is something I'm really looking forward to doing uh, throughout this year. And so it can be something in helping others who are not as, you know, blessed as you, who are not as, um, not in such a good uh, position as you in life. So how are you going to help others? And Tony Robbins say the secret of living is giving. And I, I really believe that in helping others, you will also get something back that is much more valuable because you will see how fortunate you are and how much you have in your life compared to what others have or have not. And then the last area I have, and you can have, I would suggest that you don't have more than six areas in both your personal life and in your professional life. Um, and I have a couple of uh, areas more. One is personal growth. So we all need to grow um, every day and um in order to feel meaning and in order to feel that we have a meaningful life so what are what is it that you will make sure will happen in 2017 that you will create that will ensure that you feel personal growth for me it is doing webinars or helping others um, because i'm then learning a lot for me, it is also to constantly challenge myself on what old beliefs I have that don't serve me or going to courses or doing trainings on how to be um, to achieve better results. So what is it for you? What is it that can create a personal growth for you? And I have another area, which is uh, financial freedom. So getting to the point where you don't longer need to work, but you can actually have money work or we should all have money work for us every day. So how can you get to financial freedom and what is financial freedom for you? Really? What is your financial freedom? Because it's different from for all of us and we all have a different uh, budget or we all have a different life. So what is financial freedom for you? And I wanted to show you something. Um, when, when doing this, um, we will also get into how you... Okay, so you looked at the big vision for 2017. And when you look back 
if you're if you're imagining that you're on the end of 2017 now you're entering a new year 2019 what are you grateful for having achieved in all these areas what is it that you're really really grateful for in all areas and celebrate them and be like okay so these are done and we're going to go into action and how you can um, make sure that they are accomplished i also wanted to go into so okay in order for me to achieve this big vision who do i need to be make sure that i am it's not about you being different and it's not about you becoming someone you're not it's about you being the best version of you and really stepping up and saying okay if i'm gonna achieve all these things then who do i need to be and i want you to write a list of your identity and i can give you some examples here so your identity is you're courageous or you will write i am courageous i am determined i am fit i am vitality and so the list goes on so everything that you are that you need to be in order to achieve these results for 2017 and also look at the areas where you no longer tolerate what you have currently been doing for instance do you snooze every morning and lose out so are you unable to actually get out of bed how can you go around that how can you change that uh, in you know telling yourself that i no longer tolerate not you know getting out of bed and i no longer tolerate in uh, i no longer tolerate this behavior changing that and add some joy and some playfulness for instance i've written i'm joy i am playful and because if we can't really enjoy what we're doing what is the point right what is the point okay and when you have looked at this big vision i want you to think about so what is your why why do you want to have accomplished this in all areas and you might write a paragraph on each area so why do you want to have that physical grace and power why do you want to be fit why do you want to have that extraordinary family life why 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 and really dig deep into this don't be like yeah yeah really find what drives you because it is what drives you that will create the fuel that you need to have every day in order to achieve your results if you don't have this fuel then it's going to be very easy to be like a quarter into the year and be like ah, okay i'm not gonna you know achieve them anyway so i might have to just you know continue as normal and just uh, check in and check out every day and don't really care right so what is it that drives you why what is your why and also why is it a must why is it an absolute must that you must achieve these things because you can pay for your children's education because you can go on that vacation because you can feel like you are living the life of your dreams because you can then pay for your parents uh, becoming older and needing care because you can then travel the world because you can spend time with the person you love most in the, you know in the world so what is it that makes it a must for you and i'm gonna uh, what i have been using uh, what i've been using um for planning the year is tony robbins um rpm program i'm also using another um, book now which is actually i'm gonna show it for the sake of also supporting entrepreneurs 
Uh, it's a book called Historien om dig, which is written by C.D. Abramson. So if you're a Norwegian speaker, that might be the book for you. And it is the same where you look at, so what is your ultimate vision for your life? What is your identity? What is the purpose? What is your passions? And we're going to talk about that as well. So what do you hate? What do you love? It might be really valuable to look at that if you haven't already thought about. So what is it that I hate? What is it that I don't really you know, like in people? For me, it's undecisiveness, laziness, not caring and postponing. And what is it that you love? For me, it is action. It is love, fun and adventures, passion, money, travels, great food, helping others, giving and serving. That's what I love doing. And so what serves you? What drives you? For me, it is serving others in business and in love with the family. It's adventure and it is living well. And I want you to think about, really go through it and write as well, because it, I'm pretty sure that you will find things that you are surprised about and things that you think, hmm, never really thought about that. Uh, that's new. That's I didn't think about the, that that was, you know, um, that was what I was thinking. And that's what journaling is about. We'll um, get into that tool as well. And when it comes to how you, we talked about what you're committed to do and how you want to show up every day. And I'm thinking that it is also good to write a kind of code of conduct. So a code of conduct is the standards that you will hold to yourself each day, no matter what happens. So it's gonna, you know, challenges will appear when you have small kids, it's like somebody hit, someone hit their head and it's not really fun. Somebody is really sick or challenges will happen. A client will say, you know, no, sorry, we, or a client will postpone or something will happen. Um, so how will you show up no matter what happens? And my code of conduct for your reference is I will be present, I will be kind, I will be driven, I will be playful, loving, curious, courageous, grateful, determined, smart, warm, compassionate, compassionate natural, myself, lively and exuberant. And if you think about the challenge coming your way in regards to work, then might those code of conducts help you? Would it be helpful to have that code of conduct that um, will give you different results than if you were stressed, if you were feeling like, why is this happening? Why me, um, etc. So if you had a conduct, code of conduct that no matter what happened, you would find a way for it to have meaning and you would find a way to think, what am I to learn from this? What is it that I am supposed to be, supposed to be, supposed to be, learning, be learning, learning from, from this? What is it that uh, this is trying to tell me? What is it that I am to see and understand and believe from this? That's really, really powerful. And so when you have the areas that you want to improve, so your areas of improvement or your categories of improvement, it is very helpful to write them down. You can see it's kind of tattered, <laughs> this one. So this is an example of a six months plan. Then you can take it down to quarter plans, then a monthly plan, then a weekly plan, then a daily plan. So beginning with the end in mind 
and looking backwards. So you want to have achieved this and this and this. What do you need to do next month? What do you need to do this month? What do you need to do this week and today to make it happen, you know, four months down the line? And it might be hard to make that kind of strategy and you will get better on it. It's something you will learn to do as you, you know, so don't beat yourself up if you are thinking that I should be better at this and I should be doing this um, this uh, better or I should be stronger in this, etc. Uh, really just do it. And once you have done it many times, then it's going to get, uh, you're going to get, um, it's going to get easier. And so I wanted to talk about flexibility and really paying attention to the results you're getting because why do, it doesn't really matter how a client approaches you if it's through a Facebook message or if it's through a webinar or if it's through an email or if it's through you know a reference so don't be um, inflexible in thinking that a client needs to appear in this matter and we need to be delivering this to the client so it's about you know approaching a client asking so what's your biggest goal what do you want to achieve this year or it's about approaching your peers and say okay so how can i help you what do you want to have accomplished now and then them telling you what it is and then you coming back with a possible solution or a suggestion of solution and that's also something i've learn so not really you know not creating the products in advance and then pushing it on to the clients but really asking the clients so what is it that you want to, where's your issue now what is it that you're experiencing what's going on how can i help you and then the client comes back to me and say okay we you know we need this in this area we're looking at on uh, developing our employees or the members in this in this area and we're experiencing this these challenges as you know so how can we go about that and then i deliver the value or then i um, make a su suggestion to them and it's also about sensory acuity so being making sure that you see what is going on and also that you see the results that you are creating so if it if you're not creating the results you want in your life why is it why is that what is it that you need to be doing differently than what you're currently doing what is it that and it might be something called blind zones that you know you're not really aware of what you're doing it so here comes really the time where you need to be journaling or you need to be writing things down. You need to be asking yourself questions. You need to actively ask questions and, and answer them and ask the you know, good questions. Why is it um, that I'm not having the results I want in this area already? Why am I not as fit as I want to be? Why am I not having the family life that I want to have? Why is it that I haven't created this and this and this result? And then look into, okay, so if I am to create this result, what do I need to believe? And swap it around. So what do I need to believe that is different from what I'm believing now? So I believe uh, and I am, and this is how it is. And so I believe that, for instance, it's, easy to uh, acquire clients or i believe that it is easy to uh, get financially free we just need to take the steps of doing so i believe that it is easy to live the life of my dreams i need to uh, make sure to have a plan for it and act accordingly it is easy to have an extraordinary family life i need to make sure that i'm serving the others in the way that they want to be served and etc so what are your beliefs and measurement what are you doing on a daily and weekly basis 
and monthly basis on measuring what you are doing. And how can you measure something in a substantial way? So how can you measure something concrete instead of, okay, I think we are getting a you know, result in that area. Okay, no. So what have I gotten in that area today? Or what have I um, created in that area today that is measurable? And so now we're going to talk about what I really, it's kind of like the juice for me. Because in getting your results, and that's also something I really understood, um, and Regan also, Regan Hillier mentions it in the foreword of my book, is that success, it's no secret to success. And success is 80% mindset, if not more, and 20% actions. So in order to fast track your results, you need to check how, what you're thinking and how your beliefs are. You need to check, okay, so what am I believing today that is blocking me? Because, uh, and it's a um, kind of model that Tony Robbins has uh, drawn up for us. It's in, okay, so what do you think is your potential for success in any area? What do you think is your potential will determine what action you take that action will determine your results and those results will then enforce your beliefs that will uh, infect the potential so it goes in a circle and if you have if you believe that your potential is not good in an area or you don't have the potential to acquire new clients or you don't have the potential to uh, earn the money you want to earn or you don't have the potential in any area then what do you think, how will that affect the circle? So your actions, the results, and your beliefs. And so it goes. However, if you feel that you have a potential to really, you know, kick ass something and that you have the potential to really create the results you want in any area, how will that affect your action and the results and your beliefs? So you see the circle. It's either going up or it's going down. And you want to make sure it's going up and that you believe that you have the potential to do things. So fast tracking your results. Let's dive into the juice. First of all, if you think about some area of your life that is really painful and where you have a big problem, it can be your finances, it can be your family, it can be your work situation, and you really think about this area, and it should be on the level of 7 to 10 in regards to uh, 10 being like really bad, like the worst uh, you can imagine. And 7, yeah, on the scale from 0 to 10, you get the picture. So if you focus on that issue, and I'm not going to have you focus on it too long, <laughs> or not in that state anyway. And then you focus on something that you're really grateful for. And I want to do this exercise with you. So place your hand on your heart and breathe deep in your heart. And be grateful for what this heart has guided you to do. And be grateful for getting this heart and for getting it for free. Somebody thought enough of you to give you this heart. And as long as it beats your life, be really grateful for that. Really breathe deep in your heart and be grateful for that heart and what it's guided you to do in this life. What you have done and all the great things. And then I want you to think about something that you're really proud of. Something that you're really, really, really proud of. And I want you to really be in that moment and really think about that thing that makes you proud. Breathe the way you breathe when you are proud. Really think about that moment where you were so proud. And I want you to think about a moment where you can be that you can be really happy for, some a joyful moment. 
something you experienced that was just joyful pure joy maybe you were laughing so much that you know milk came out of your nose really think about that joyful moment you know hysterical something stupid maybe that you thought about think about that and grab another moment it might be a sexy moment something happened that was really you know got your juices up something really sexy think about that moment and be in that moment enjoy that moment and then you think about something else that you're proud of think about that on top of all the other feelings so on top of being proud on top of being joyful on top of the sexy moment something else that you're really proud about be there feel it breathe it and make sure to stay in this state and now you think about the problem that you previously thought about and make sure to stay in the beautiful state that you have been when you are joyful when you're proud and that sexy moment really stay in that state and think about the problem you have what do you need to believe about that problem what do you need to focus on what do you need to believe and make sure about this situation maybe it is that you know that you can handle it you know that you can solve that issue it doesn't feel that big issue now when you're in a beautiful state does it so being grateful and doing these kind of exercises and these exercises are done by the most successful business tycoons out there gratefulness gratitude and being in that state of not feeling fear not feeling anxiety not being worried it's really powerful because you can't be grateful and fearful at the same time you can't be happy for something and then feel anxiety it doesn't it doesn't uh, work that way so that is one tool to fast track your results another tool that i've recently found out the power of i've heard about it and then i thought yeah that sounds very soft and uh, nice and i'll get back to that later is journaling and it's not like writing a diary and you know when you're 14 it's about okay so it's about finding out what is hindering you from achieving the results you want to have accomplished now and why aren't you having these results in your life now it's about finding out who you want to be the best version of you not someone else but who do you want to be and who do you want to show up as it's about writing new beliefs because your old beliefs weren't empowering you it can be about what you are grateful for today it can be so what's going on what is it that go is going on internally and how can i serve others because i'm sure there's others who are feeling the same things so journaling and throughout the day i've been um, just the past month i think i've been writing that much of uh, things in order to get it all out and get and that was what actually made me aware that i was self-sabotaging aware that i wasn't taking the space that um, clients came to me and said we wanted you to you know be there and we kind of missed you and we wanted you to take more space and why didn't you so that was what made me aware of things like that and i also uh, got even more aware of them when clients told me uh, what happened right so journaling is really powerful and I had a podcast with Regan Hillier um, who also wrote the forward on my book and um, is a serial entrepreneur and and she said that journaling is the most powerful tool that she uses and I uh, know that for instance also Tony Robbins and other big business uh, tycoons 
use it to create the life they want and also to make sure that they don't because uh, to step back we have a brain that is created from you know millions of years ago to protect us to keep us alive and to either fight or flight so every time we experience something that is uncomfortable or new we are like no 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 okay no no i don't want to be you know experiencing that how, how can i get out of this and uh ah, etc or we are going into a fight position where you know i'm gonna fight this change and uh, etc so journaling is about getting out of that uh, state and out of that reactive state and into a state where you are empowered you have control you at least control what the things in your life that you can control and you can control your mind and what you're focusing on and what you focus on is what you're going to create so whatever mantra you go and tell yourself either i don't have enough money or i don't have enough clients or i don't have the resources that i need to create the results i want that's what's going to show up that's go what's going to be real i don't have the you know family life that i want i don't have etc et this is what is going to be your reality so you want to make sure to step out of that and to snap out of that and to create new beliefs and to create new uh, thoughts and focus and journaling is all about that and so I've mentioned also gratitude, which is such a powerful tool to use uh, throughout the day. There might be or there will be situations where you feel stressed or where you feel worried, etc. And getting out of that situation and if you overachievers, you might be like, no, I'm never worried and I only get stressed. Well, uh, stress is a form for fear and anxiety it's uh, just another way of uh, saying saying it so what will you be instead of stressed and fearful and i've written down you might see here i've written down some um, some things you know what i want to be and what i don't want to be i want to be in a beautiful state happy playful creative bold uh, joyful, you know, uh, feeling gratitude, curious, hungry, driven, uh, fun. And this is actually something you can measure every day. You can measure, so what am I feeling now compared to where I want to be, what I want to be feeling? And then I don't want to be feeling suffering or fear, uh, loss, or that I'm having less than, or that I never, never something anxiety fear or worry and to get out of that state those bad states that you don't want to be in gratitude is really the key gratitude is such a good tool and doing the exercise which we did earlier is putting on some great music and go on youtube and youtube you know tony robbins does it so well and there's so many others as well that do gratitude floods and, you know um yeah can be um, meditation even we want to, i wanted to go into that as well meditation is might seem like a tool that is uh, i don't feel like i'm gonna you know i'm gonna sit still and not say anything and not think anything for x amount of minutes but you don't need to do that you can just you know zone out for some breaths you know just focus on your breath that is meditation Focus, focusing on your breath for 10 times and not really fighting, you know, not fighting the thoughts, not being like, okay, I need to not think anything. Just, you know, let them pass by. Whatever you're thinking, okay, you're thinking it. But taking that moment to readjust and to calibrate and to get out of space of reactiveness, it's really powerful. And so... We have a tool that is used by most um, Olympic champions, I would say, and that is vis visualization. So before any race, before any competition, they go into visualizing, you know, the uh, route and visualizing the path they're going to do and visualizing how they're going to do it. And uh, research has shown that the muscles in their body 
are actually activating as if they're actually doing it so a skier might do you know the route in their head and the muscles are activating as the skier would actually do the race and visualization so if you can't if you can't imagine if you can't imagine a better uh, better every day than you have now how can you create it if you can't imagine what you want to have in your life how can you create something else than what you're currently having how can you create something when you can't when you don't know so a good um, example here would be if you go to look at a car if you want to buy a new car or you suddenly find that you're pregnant or you are looking at going entrepreneurial and then suddenly you see that car everywhere or you see pregnant people everywhere or you bump into entrepreneurs everywhere it's the focus right so make sure to visualize and make sure to uh, visualize so that you can uh, uh, create it in your life then priming every day prime and priming for me is about thinking about three things that I'm grateful for and then thinking about three things that I want to have accomplished either six or 12 months down the road and really being in those you know moments of gratitude and then the moments of thinking about what I want to have accomplished and really enjoying it really celebrating those things that I want to have accomplished that is such a powerful tool to start your morning with. And even I that have, you know, a small baby and a toddler, I managed to do it. So, and I'm an entrepreneur as well. So if I managed to do it, I'm pretty sure you can as well. <laughs> it's doesn't need to take long. It can be, and it doesn't need to be, frankly, you know, when you start your day, it can be before you start emailing and before you start your working day. So it might be that you have to do things in the morning that, you know, you just, you, you can't fit it in. You can't fit the five or 10 minutes in fine. Uh, but before you start your day, before you start your working day, make sure you do something, either gratitude, journaling, visualization, meditation, priming, or you know gratitude for being in that beautiful state make sure you do that before you start your day i'm just going to take a sip of water okay so we have covered a lot we have um, covered what you are committed to do this year what you are committed to how you are committed to show up uh, we have committed we have gone through what's your intention we have gone through what you're not longer going to tolerate we have gone through outcome what you want in any area of a life and your big picture we have gone through what's your why why is it a must that you want to have this accomplished we've gone through flexibility so being flexible and having sensory acuity on you know looking at what is giving results what's not and also measuring we have gone through the tools that will give you results tomorrow in any area if you use them daily and if you do the work Beautiful state, journaling, gratitude, visualization, meditation, and priming. And so I wanted to talk about the 20%. So now we've been talking about, you know, the 80% of success. I wanted to talk also about the 20%. And what do you need to do in order to create these results? What's your action plan? And I want you to be really creative about this and think about things that you haven't done before to create your results. For me, I can say that has been to, for instance, write the book, getting it published. It has been to write a press release, doing things that I haven't done before to create results that I want and create, create different results than what I have accomplished lately so and also look at so in any area what is it that 
I would say have a list of at least 20 things that you will try out for the next month and then measure it. So when you've tried those 20 things in each area, look at, okay, so what gave me the results I wanted? What didn't give me the results? Okay, do I need to change that, etc. And use that action plan daily. Go move forward as the... Um, as the um, thing I showed with uh, my yearly plan I also have this per month and I also have this per day I also have this per week right so go through it adjust it make sure to not be inflexible in way of yes I decided to do this then I'm gonna do that you know no matter what I see that it's not creating results but I'm gonna do it anyway don't do that now try something else be playful and but also be patient it's creating results is a lot about patience as well it might not show up instantly it might but it might not and why is that is it an in limiting belief i have about you know the results not showing up or you know what is that so and then as the last thing i want you to think about who can you go to and who can you go to in your you know, surroundings that can help you with getting these results? Who can you ask? Who can you get uh, to mentor you? It's really important to have a mentor and a coach or an advisor, call it whatever you want. And maybe several as well, because they all could you know, um, model someone that has succeeded in the area that you want to have success in or ask that person if that person wants to mentor you. It's so important to, to, to fast track your results, to not have you know, 10 years of you know, trial and error and not achieving results, but really, um, really fast tracking your results and getting there as soon as possible to so get a mentor. And so what other resources do you have? Could you use leverage? Could you also delegate some of the action points that you need, you see you need to have? Could you delegate that to someone and make them do it for you? So, again, take action, but measure it and make sure that you adjust when you see that something isn't working or it hasn't give it three months or give it to one month depending on what it is if it hasn't given you the results you want then maybe you should try something different and at the end i promised you that i wanted to give you or that i would give you an offer that is we have a success hub at uh, facebook called engaging game changers and it's a hub where we share and people share their challenges, but also their victories. And you get um, bi-weekly webinars with a lot of um, information about how to achieve your results. So I wanted to give you the offer. It's normally $97, and that's the price it's uh, going to be. And now I want to give it to you for only $47. And I'm not sure how long I will have this offer. It's going to be at least when I'm launching the book uh, next week. However, make sure to um, take advantage of that now. And if you want to take advantage of that offer, email me at tonya at growthitude.com or find me on Facebook on Tonya Elizabeth Arrow or PM me or comment in this video and I will make sure that you get the link to the offer, okay? So I hope that you will use these tools to make 2017 the best year ever. And stay tuned because my book is coming out in some days and I am very excited about sharing it with you. It's going to give you a lot of tools and a lot of histories in how I have overcome challenges I'm really looking forward to sharing that with you. And I wish you an extraordinary day and I wish you an extraordinary 2017. Make sure that you look at what you want to have accomplished 
every day. Make sure that you don't only think at the beginning of the year, okay, mm, might do this and that, and then at the end of the year, you haven't accomplished any of the dreams that you really wanted to have accomplished. So check in on yourself every day, have someone hold you accountable, find a mentor that can give you new results or that can give you new tips on how you are accomplishing. And I wish you the best of years. Enjoy it. It's yours. Make it count. Bye.